Hello there. An exciting bit of physics news came out last week. An experiment at Fermilab near Chicago announced they had made the world's most precise ever measurement of the magnetism of a particle called a muon. Now, why is that interesting? Well, go way, 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 way back to the early 2000s. An experiment at Brookhaven near New York made the first precise measurement of how magnetic muons are. So what is a muon? Well, a muon is essentially a heavy electron. It's a fundamental particle, a heavy cousin of the electron, identical to an electron, in fact, in every way, except for the fact that it's 200 times heavier and only lives for a few millionths of a second on average. Okay, but this experiment, so the experiment in New York measured the magnetism of the muon, and what was interesting was that they found that it was more magnetic than predicted by our best theory of particles and forces, the standard model of particle physics. Now this caused enormous excitement at the time because it suggested that the behaviour of muons was being affected by hitherto unknown, undiscovered fundamental particles or forces. And this could be the first clue to something new beyond our current theory of particle physics. So fast forward to two years ago, April 2021, a new souped up version of the same experiment from Brookhaven was built at Fermilab in Chicago and they announced their first result and the big question on everyone's minds was would this new measurement line up with the old Brookhaven measurement or would it move back towards the prediction of the standard model and to everyone's delight and excitement uh, this new result landed perfectly bang on top of the original measurement and the anomaly that was around three sigma grew to over four sigma now this caused enormous excitement in the worldwide press. You had uh, some rather hyperbolic headlines in various newspapers saying that you know physics had been overturned or broken. That was a bit of an exaggeration, but it was very, very exciting because particle physicists and physicists in general have been looking for chinks in the standard model's armor for years. I mean, I've spent my career at the Large Hadron Collider looking for places where the standard model might break down. We haven't found any yet. And this was perhaps the best sign we'd seen so far. That there are new fundamental ingredients in our universe that we've not seen. And if that's true, that could help us address some of the big outstanding problems in physics, you know, like what is dark matter that dominates the universe? Why is there matter in the universe at all? So potentially really, really exciting. Now, this measurement that came out uh, just two weeks ago was from the same experiment, but now with four times more data. So they added two more years worth of data. And what was great about the measurement, it was, you know, it was even more precise, the uncertainty. So how well the magnetism of the muon had been measured shrank by a factor of two, as did the systematic uncertainty. So a really beautiful, pristine measurement. And again, it didn't move a muscle. The value stayed right where it was. The error shrunk. And if you compare it to the prediction of the standard model, at least the prediction that we were using back in 2021, this anomaly has now grown to over five sigma. What does that mean? Why is that important? Well, five sigma means essentially that your experimental measurement and your theoretical prediction are more than five units of uncertainty away from each other. And this five sigma threshold is the gold standard for saying that we've discovered something new. So this, on the face of it, is a bona fide discovery of new physics. We've finally broken the standard model. Or have we? The complication is that actually around the time that the 2021 measurement came out, a new theoretical prediction based on the standard model landed. So this is a new calculation of how magnetic muons ought to be. And what was really rather dismaying was that this new prediction was much closer to the experimental measurement. So you now have this strange situation. You have two different ways of calculating how magnetic muons ought to be based on the standard model, based on our current theory, and they don't agree with each other. Now, clearly, having two different theoretical calculations of the same quantity that give different answers is bad. That means that one or other of them, or perhaps both, contain some kind of mistake. And that leaves us in the really frustrating position of not knowing whether this anomaly is the genuine sign that we have finally discovered something beyond the standard model or, on the other hand, another spectacular triumph for the standard model. So to understand how you can get two different calculations of the same thing that give you different answers, we have to dive in a bit and ask the question, 
why is measuring the magnetism of the muon an interesting thing to do in the first place? Ultimately, this comes down to what we mean when we talk about a particle. Now, despite the subject being called particle physics, particles aren't actually thought to be the fundamental ingredients of our universe. The fundamental ingredients of the universe, we believe, are invisible, fluid-like objects that fill all of space known as quantum fields. Now, quantum fields are invisible, but they are physical. They're all around us. If you've ever held uh, two poles of a magnet and pushed them together and you felt that undeniable repulsive force while well, you're feeling the effect of a quantum field. In that case, the magnetic field, which is an aspect of the electromagnetic field. And then the quantum bit is that it's possible to make a little vibration, a little ripple in these fields. And in the case of the electromagnetic field, that little ripple shows up as a particle called the photon, the particle of light. So in the same way, the muon, the particle that we've been talking about, is a little ripple in an invisible field called the muon field. Now, because this is true for all of the particles, what that means is essentially empty space is chock full of these invisible quantum fields. And these quantum fields have an effect on the observed properties of different particles. So, for example, when the muon's moving around through the vacuum, it's constantly interacting with the other quantum fields in nature. And it can do this in a myriad different ways. So, so one thing that can happen, for example, is that it can interact with the electromagnetic field and that electromagnetic field can then interact with the electron field and create what's often referred to as a virtual particle. So you get this little loop of a virtual electron and anti-electron created for a fleeting instant, which then goes back into the electromagnetic field. So you have this kind of, if you imagine a kind of quantum froth, essentially, that's bubbling around the muon and this quantum froth has an effect on its magnetism so therefore measuring the magnetism of the muon doesn't just tell us about muons it also tells us about what other quantum fields are hanging around in the vacuum near to the muon and that means if there's a new quantum field say a quantum field associated with dark matter that could have a measurable effect on the magnetism of the muon essentially that dark matter field will form part of that quantum froth that's bubbling around the muon and change its magnetism. And therefore, seeing a deviation from the prediction of the standard model in the magnetism of the muon is really very exciting in principle. Now, this brings us back to the problem of having these two different standard model predictions for the muon's magnetism. The difference between them ultimately comes from how the theorists treated the hardest to calculate bit of this quantum mechanical froth. The part of this quantum mechanical froth that comes from quarks and gluons, the particles that make up the nuclei of atoms. Now, the theory of quarks and gluons is famously difficult to do any calculations with. So the first theoretical prediction uses a clever technique where they use experimental data, essentially data from colliders where you fire electrons and positrons at each other and you make quarks and gluons, and then translates that data into a prediction of how those particles ought to affect the magnetism of the muon. Now, it's that prediction based on experimental data that is in big disagreement with the measurement of the muon's magnetism. That's the one that gives you a five sigma anomaly and the discovery of new physics. But more recently, there have been breakthroughs in actually calculating the effect of quarks and gluons from first principles. This is using a technique known as lattice QCD, and it essentially involves running incredibly complicated calculations on massive supercomputers. And back in 2021, a group of theorists known as the BMW collaboration, as far as I know, no relation to the German car maker, came up with a new prediction based on this lattice QCD technique. And it's this prediction that's in much better agreement with the measurement made by the muon G-2 experiment. Now, you might think because that first prediction was based on experimental data, basically based on the real world, that it ought to be more reliable than this clever lattice QCD technique. But actually, the, if you look at the experimental data that goes as input to this first prediction, it comes from a range of different experiments and they don't all agree with each other. And more recently, a, an experiment in Russia came up with a new result that seems to be in quite strong tension with the earlier measurements from these electron-positron colliders. So essentially, the whole area is a little bit murky. So where do we go from here? 
Well, ultimately, to be able to say whether or not the magnetism of a muon is really telling us about the existence of new fundamental particles or forces, theorists are going to have to come to a consensus over what the standard model prediction for the muon's magnetism ultimately is. These two different techniques, lattice QCD and the prediction based on electron-positron collider data, are going to have to arrive at the same value. And once we have a consensus prediction, we'll then be able to say whether we really are seeing the first breaks in the standard model's great edifice. If that happens, it's going to be tremendously exciting. But I think wherever this goes, one thing we should recognize is that this measurement by the muon G-2 experiment is a really fantastic piece of experimental work. It's taken years and years of hard graft building the magnetic ring and the detectors which ultimately allow the experimenters to measure this property to a fantastic level of precision, not to mention all the data analysis that's been going on for the last few years. And this experimental story isn't done yet. There's still more years of data that have yet to be analyzed. So this really precise result is going to get even more precise in the future. And that's going to be a fantastic scientific legacy that will last way beyond this argument over what the real standard model prediction ultimately is. If you found this interesting, you can read more about particle physics and the search for the ultimate ingredients of our universe in my book, uh, How to Make an Apple Pie from Scratch. Uh, this is the British version of the book with a lovely white cover. Or if you really don't like the letter U or you're a big fan of the letter Z, then it's also available in American with this rather classy black cover. So um, do pick that up. It's available in all good bookshops or online. And uh, I'll be back soon with another video about the latest developments in physics. Thanks very much.